I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item 1.4 is public input. This would be uh, public input that is not related to the public hearing. Is there any public input tonight? If not, we will move on to item number two, which would be the minutes of the January 21st meeting. Um, I would entertain a motion on those minutes. I have a motion. I have a second, I think. All those in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That motion carries. Item number three is the hearing, uh, public hearing tonight. Uh, hearing pursuant to a notice published by the city clerk. There is a hearing scheduled for this evening to give persons an opportunity to be heard relative to the proposed taking of dedicated parkland located at 5430 Manning Road. The purpose of the taking of the parkland is to create new parkland in the same subdivision. So I will call for a motion to open the hearing. I have a motion from Charlie, to second from Todd. Um, any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of opening the, the, the uh, hearing indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. The hearing is, is now open. Um, Joe, uh, do we want to do just a short presentation or is there anyone who wants to speak to this motion tonight? If not, it would be appropriate uh, for a motion to close the public hearing. We have a motion. Do we have a second? And we have a second. Um, any discussion on the motion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Chair vo also votes aye. The uh, hearing is hereby closed. Item number four. Uh, this is actually a... Uh, a repeat of action that was taken by this committee at the January 21st meeting. Um, but it is the re resolution uh, expressing the sense of the council that the Board of Marina Park and Forestry Commissioners consider beginning the process set forth under Section 74-2, uh, Sheboygan Municipal Code for the taking of park for non-park use under Section 74.2 of the city of Sheboygan Municipal Code. Um, because this is on the agenda, it would be appropriate to have a motion to, um, to act on it. So do we have a motion? We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that motion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. That motion is passed. Okay, item 4.2 would be the marina report. Matt Power. Just step to the podium right there. All right, sorry for the last minute handout there, but to show off a packet on the recent marina or parks forestry reports. Uh, first, as the seasonal slip occupancy reports, um, just comparing last year's slip occupancy year to date to this year's. Um, as you can see, the, some, some areas were seen, seen some growth in, were a little ahead, and some areas were a little behind in over, pre, over the last year. Um, kind of segues into the, the marketing and sales portion there. Uh, a lot of what we're seeing right now, there's a lot of uncertainty with voters and making commitments to a slip ready, given the, uh, the high water issues Lake is facing. So this is a trend that a lot of the marinas that we both we manage and what we've talked to as well are seeing. Um, we are talking to lots of voters, um, probably about three or four a week, about interest in the slip. Um, it's just difficult with the uncertainty to get the commitments right now. So we're expecting a, a busy spring as long as uh, the weather is cooperative. Um, other than the seasonal slip occupancy, though, we opened our first day for reservations for the 2020 voting season on January 2nd. So we got 65 reservations in the first day alone. Um, a good portion of those were for the Ryder Cup, but we saw at least um, a good portion of that too, just for the season in general. 
Um, just as a comparison, in previous years, we'd be lucky to get three or four in the first day or, or week. Um, so it's good to see that that number is um, very high right now. Um, Tended to the Chicago Boat Show this season as well. A um, lot of good discussion with boaters on transit cruising and um, handed out lots of information on Sheboygan as well. We're also currently in the process of redesigning the marina's website. Um, the idea is to help with search engine optimization and grow traffic to the website. Uh, the new one will also be much more mobile friendly as well. Um, On to the part that most people are probably concerned with right now is the docks. Um, we've been very fortunate to have a very mild winter so far. Um, the high water is certainly still an issue and we've had a few storms roll through that have caused um, some, I wouldn't say issues, but concern uh, with what might be to come this season. Uh, we had the first weekend in January, a pretty rough high wind storm coming through and a lot of overspray on the breakwater onto ADOC. Um, didn't cause any damage, but caused um, quite the scene at least there, as some of you may have seen there in the picture there included. Uh, but as of right now, we are currently, um, for the most part, ice free in the marina. Um, and we have very little to no damage recorded so far this season. Um, just touching on some you know, feed, customer feedback and um, reviews, we did receive the Elite Fleet Award again for this year. Um, we were the, one of the inaugural marinas to receive the award um, last year, and we did achieve it again this year. It's on marinas.com. It's for maintaining a 4.8 rating or higher and getting 10 reviews in that season. Um, and there's only, it's uh, only the top 0.2% of marinas get that on their website. So it was, it was a high award to get. We also did get um, two reviews ready for this year, which will help us in trying to maintain that again going forward for 2020. Uh, and I included those at the end of the packet then as well. Um, in our last meeting, I did hand out the 2019 seasonal survey reviews. Um, I guess at this time I can open up to any questions, if there's any follow-up to those then as well. Are there uh, any comments from any of the, or questions for Matt from the committee members? Uh, one question, Matt, I mean, one of the advantages of our marina is that we have a floating dock system compared mm -hmm. to uh, some of the other marinas, certainly that I visited this last summer, that are really struggling with dock issues. Yes. If if anything, I think that should <clears throat> enhance the number of transient boaters uh, right. that could be visiting Sheboygan. Um, is there any campaign, uh, just advertising the way our... our yep, we have several uh, campaigns going, both on social media, email, and um, through our website to promote slips for the season. Um, yeah, as well as following up with um, past customers as well to make sure we try and get them confirmed for this season too. Um, I, I can't imagine that people are, are thinking about not boating because of it. There might be a few, mm -hmm. but um, I mean, we, <laughs> it, it, we, we really have an advantage here in Sheboygan, and, I, and right. it, it should help us again with everything, with our fuel sales and everything right. else. That we and that's what we at. see in a lot of people we talk to. There's just, uh, in the building population in general, a lot of uncertainty going into next year. Mm. Very good. Anything else? Anyone else? Thanks, Ben. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Maywood Report. Dave. Well, at the uh, tail end of Last year, we began a uh, master site planning process with Stantec Engineering. They're a consulting firm, and uh, they hope to be finished with our new updated master site plan at the end of March. So that's a very exciting step forward for us. Our last master site plan was put together in 1980. So we've pretty much exhausted everything that was on that plan. So I'm really excited about what the future holds given that new master site plan. 
Uh, at our last board meeting, I announced to our board that our annual program called Wishing for Winter, which has been going on for quite a few years, I guess everybody's tired of wishing for winter anymore. So I, I've told them that uh, we're done wishing for winter, um, primarily because that was a program that I started years ago and have been uh, running for, for a bunch of years. And on April 30th, which is Arbor Day, I'll plant my last tree at Maywood and walk away. So we won't have another Wishing for Winter program next December. We have some uh, open houses coming up for our nature-based preschool. We are now in our third year of having a nature-based preschool. I will circulate these. So just in case you have kids or grandkids or neighbors that have young kids, um, tomorrow night is an open house for their, our nature-based preschool. It would be a great time for people to come out and see what it looks like and what's going on. Uh, really proud of the fact that our, our four-year-old kids are spending at least half of their days at Maywood outside. Um, so regardless of the weather, we've got them equipped with Gore-Tex suits so they can go out in rain, snow, sleet, um, I've seen postal carriers not go out in this stuff, so that's uh, pretty impressive that our little kids are doing that. In honor of the 20th anniversary, or 50th anniversary, excuse me, of Earth Day, um, this year we're, we are planning to have at least 50 environmental programs throughout 2020 to uh, commemorate this significant event. We're also going to have a large Earth Day event on the 25th of, of April. Um, Earth Day is actually on the 22nd, but nobody would come out on a Wednesday. So we're having it on the 25th, which is a Saturday. We'll have lots of activities going on. We'll be planting well over 600 trees, um, doing some invasive species removal, and that'll all go on in the morning, but in the afternoon, it's all family, fun, family-friendly activities. So kayaking, archery, um, nest box building, and on and on. Uh, along with a brat fry in the middle of the day. So what Sheboygan event would, would go without a brat fry? And then uh, coming up this weekend, I've been asked to speak at the um, Plymouth Arts Center to do a program called Maywood Then and Now. So it's a reflection back of what the property looked like back at the time that Mr. and Mrs. May owned the, the property and the house and all of the, tr the changes and transitions that have happened um, over all of those years uh, to that property and how it looks today. So it's quite dramatic to see that all those changes coming up or that, that have taken place. And that program is coming up this Saturday morning. So if you're interested, 9.30 at the Plymouth Arts Center. The other thing I have for you is I'm gonna hand out uh, these little cards. The cards are for a program that the National Wildlife Federation puts together called the Junior Duck Stamp Program. And they've been doing this for many, many years. The idea is that kids, I think it's between the ages of like uh, five or six and 18, can do drawings of uh, any kind of waterfowl. And then they select the winners from all of those drawings from throughout Wisconsin to use as the, uh, the duck stamp um, that that hunters buy. And we have a whole bunch of samples that just came in today of those duck stamp uh, submissions. They'll be on display now through the end of March. So if you'd like to see what they look like, a lot of them are really, really pretty impressive. Um, there's no way that uh, I could ever draw anything like that. Wanted to also fill you in on some of our hours that we put in as well. Um, we have some regular things that happen, and unlike the years gone by where we were just open and we had uh, programs or meetings or, or school groups stopping in, um, now we have the, the preschool there every Monday through Thursday from 8 until 11. We have Werner High School that meets out there. Their science and math classes are there every Tuesday and Thursday through the whole day. And then on Fridays we, do, uh, we have a morning session 
that generally goes from about 8.30 to 11 for OWLS, and OWLS is an acronym, stands for Older, Wiser, Livelier Scholars. We used to say seniors, but we've changed it to scholars because the seniors didn't like it. So um, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of fun just to get those seniors out and about doing things outdoors. On March 4th, we have a CIVMIC training that's going to happen at Maywood, so we'll have lots of representatives from uh, DPW and other departments there. And then on the 15th of March, we have our annual Flapjack Day. You definitely don't want to miss that. Um, in case you want to see uh, Joel Curlin in action, he'll be flipping flapjacks, I think, or, or turning sausages, one of the two. Both. There you go, multi-talented. So he'll be there on, on the 15th of March to help us out with that program. And then David Beeble will be at Maywood uh, coming up on May 4th. Uh, he'll be doing what's called our Lunch and Learn series. And uh, he'll be addressing uh, the latest and greatest in garbage collection technology as, long, as well as uh, what's happening in the world of recycling. So that's what's going on at Maywood. Any questions of David? Thanks. Great, thank you. Um, item 4.4 would be the park and forestry report, and that would be Joe and, and Tim. It's okay, I'll, I'll stay here because I'm going to, uh, uh, if we cut over to the, the report, and we could uh, kind of see some of the things that we have for us. Uh, unfortunately, Tim could not make it tonight. Um, um, but a lot of what you're going to see here is, is also going to, going to be in the DPW annual report. But uh, tonight I'm just gonna kinda hit, highlight uh, um, capital projects and what we did over 2019. Hopefully this is probably the third time you've seen them. So I've been trying to show you as we go, uh, go along some as built um, pictures and, and, uh, and then uh, also talk about next year, uh, this year actually what we got coming up in 2020. So, um, so we wrapped up, uh, uh, and actually in 2018 uh, was the Optimus Park spray pad, uh, splash pad, which was a, a huge success, very well used, very much complemented uh, the rest of the amenities at the park. But we did have a, a, a ribbon cutting last year, 2019. So um, we were officially, we had some grass growing around it, looked nice, so we, we had a, a nice little ribbon cutting. Uh, we were able to wrap up the, the land park garage last year and then uh, the Valras tennis court to the right and bottom. Um, unfortunately with the, the cooler weather starting so quick, everything was basically done except the painting. So the filling in and then the painting, the, the fences up, um, the asphalt down. Um, so we'll just need to finish that up. The contractor will and uh, um, hopefully as, as soon as we can have consistent warm weather and then the landscaping. And then to the left bottom is the Kiwanis Park Master Plan, which we completed uh, last year's with uh, uh, the consultant Aries. So it's nice to have that one done. Also last year, um, for the most part, um, the Shaw Family Playground um, was just wrapping things up. It was pretty much a two-year program. Um, uh, they uh, completed the pavilion at the end of uh, 2019, so that is in full use now. And um, the playground itself had one ribbon cutting, and, and it's gonna have another one again this year. So it'll be one more big ribbon cutting celebration. Uh, they're still doing fundraising, you can still get a slat, um, but that's, um, that's been just a great partner um, um, to have. And um, as I explained in the, in the report, we have uh, several partners, and that's just one of them. On the bottom left, um, you can see the A's. We worked with them quite a bit the last few years. Sheboygan A's, um, putting in LED lights, uh, new light posts. And uh, if you were able to get to a game, you were able to see that in 2019. Um, very huge difference uh, in watching the game. And then what you see there is a party deck, and that was also put in last year. Um, basically, the A's and their fundraising um, put, put all of that in, so with no assistance to the city. To the left, um, Mid Lake Softball, another great group that we work with. 
um, with the money that they've been able to put aside. Uh, we're, they put about uh, $30,000 back into the park last year, um, adding new, new field rock to each field, grading it out, should absorb the water a lot better. So that was a, um, a, huge, um, a huge addition to that, that area. Um, they've always had a lot of problems with water, ponding, and hopefully that'll take care of it. Um, a lot of friends of the parks, uh, as you well know, uh, a, a, a big one that started their work last year, and it was a, a long time coming. It started 2006 with Larry McDonald putting in a peace pool um, by Deland Park, in Deland Park, and last year, phase, phase one was completed. So this group, can't say enough about them, uh, just a great group to be um, have as our friends, and um, it's, uh, they had a great celebration, uh, basically a, a, a ribbon cutting, and it really looks nice. So hopefully if you haven't been down there, please take a look. Another really good partner we've had that we've been um, working with the last couple of years, LNRP, Lakeshore National Resource Partnership. Um, they were able to go out and find many partners to help us start work along the bluffs. Uh, so along Broughton Drive, and um, they bring in WISCOR, and basically with the help of um, sometimes one full-time person from Stantec and six college people from WISCOR, they did all that work. It was amazing. So they spent two weeks along that bluff and got more, more work done than I, I could imagine. I, I did not imagine that they'd get that more, much work done. And we already have them scheduled to come back. They also did work at um, Maywood um, and um, Burr, Oak, um, Burr Oak property and then Pigeon River um, land. So, so they spent four weeks here. It really helped us out a lot. Got to nudge, nudge me, turn the page. <laughs> we have also two private, um, public-private partnerships. Um, one we've been working with uh, for quite a while now, since 2013, um, Mike with EOS. Um, he, the last couple, three years, he's ran the Quarry Beach, and uh, that uh, is going very well. Brings in a lot of people from, from the Chicago area. A lot of people from out of town are coming in just to use this area. So that's been a nice partnership. I'm gonna get back to that one just a little bit with um, another capital project that we started last year, but really it's gonna um, grow this year. And our second one was uh, for the first year of the Sheboygan Beer Garden. So um, it took two years to get to the point that, uh, to opening it, um, but you can see the, the mayor here cutting the ribbon um, with, the, uh, with the owner. And I've gotta say probably other than the, the river being so high up um, was the only, <laughs> only thing that really um, kind of hindered this. Uh, it went very well. Um, it was nice to see people socializing. Um, remember, we, we allowed dogs to this area. Uh, it's nice to see animals there and music. And um, we're, we're talking to them this year and how we can make things better. And that'll, that'll be coming. We're going to make a few changes with them um, that he pointed out. So uh, that was a really good start to a good year. Um, just It'll be even better when the river goes back down. So forestry, uh, we had a, another great Arbor Day last year. Uh, Tim and the crew worked with Nature Explorers Club from Pigeon River Elementary School. Uh, we've been tr really trying to work with fourth graders or environmental groups. Uh, this is the third year in a row that we've worked with uh, an environmental group. So they're just really fun to work with. They're, they're they inquire a lot, they want to learn. Um, so they had a great year uh, planting trees, much needed trees, and, and Dennis really helped us out with this um, at the disc golf course at the quarry. So that was a, we are now like at our 41st uh, Tree City USA. This is one of the things that we need to do for that. So looking forward to uh, 2020, um, I'm gonna wrap up the Valor, Valor Tennis Courts. Um, Working, um, the, the one I wanted to get back to with the quarry is we've been in talks with several consultants 
for a master plan for the quarry. And I, I look back, I've got two prints that we could find, um, I think it was 1961, and I think it, the JCs actually did a, a plan, but um, actually a couple plans, but uh, those are the, the only things really we could find for the park. And they the really used, it, as it developed, they used both those plans, I think, quite a bit. So we want to remaster plan the whole park. We definitely want to keep a lot of, you know, the things that are there that are working. Uh, we want to work with the disc golf groups. We want to work with the, the bikers. We want to work with Mike and EOS and find ways of really making that park better. And I think we're, we're, we really got something good going for what we've done and uh, how we can improve it. So uh, we finally, to the we met with three consultants. We're finally to the point where we picked one and we should have, um, the, the, the council should be seeing the resolution for the one we picked um, real soon. So, um, cameras in the park, we actually started that last year too with block ramp money. Uh, there's quite a few parks that uh, we'll be getting cameras in. The cameras have been purchased and uh, they'll be going in. So workers and King and Kiwanis, and that'll be a great addition to have some cameras in our park. And hopefully we'll continue that until all our parks have some cameras. Um, again, we, we address sidewalk issues, ADA sidewalk issues. So we'll be doing that again like we did last year. And let's see, Veterans Park, um, uh, Veterans and Balreth are the two that we're gonna do that with uh, um, ADA accessible, so some new sidewalks. And Roosevelt, we are re, um, redoing the tennis court. So we basically have to get the, t uh, the, the asphalt out of there and start from a new base and build it up. So that'll be happening this year too. So um, Moose Park, will also be getting uh, a smaller playground. So really, up until now, it's just had kind of some pieces, bits and pieces. It's gonna have a, um, a central playground item and a few things around it. And then the Optimist Club has told me that they wanna give $25,000 for more equipment at Optimist Park. So we'll be going out for bids for two $25,000 uh, playground equipment for two different parks. And that's what I got. Any questions of Joe and his report? Yeah, great job. Another good year. Um, the next item is actually the Quarry Park uh, Master Plan. Uh, did you want to go into more detail on that, Joe, since that was in the packet with the consultant, or did you hit the... The highlights. Yeah, no, I mean we worked out a we worked out a scope. Um, really, every the what you have in the packet is is what um, what we asked for from the three consultants of, of past things they've done, what they think they can do for us. Um, the scope is really to look at the whole park um, and, and really concentrate on the beach area too, but the whole park itself. Look at pedestrian flow. Look at the along the Pigeon River. So um, we've had some great talks. This, this uh, Grafe, um, out of Madison, really stood out and, and, and talking to us about what could happen, what, you know, what they would do, how they would handle it. So we're really excited to work with them. And um, again, uh, we're still working um, with Thomas and the attorney's office to, for the agreement to get that turned in. So that item is on the agenda tonight just as a discussion item. It doesn't require any action of this committee. Uh, but if you have a chance to review that packet in there, uh, it showed some of the projects that they've done in other area communities. And it, it looks that they really can bring some great things to Sheboygan. So uh, it sounds good. If there's nothing else, our next meeting is scheduled for February 19th. Uh, primarily, uh, I think the only agenda item will be the public hearing uh, that's required. Uh, and it'll be the second of the three public hearings. So with that, uh, motion would be in order to adjourn.
We have a motion. Is there a second? I think I heard a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Chair also votes aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Mike. I get to you hold your gavel. So, yes, the next